Hey, how's it going? My name's Nat, coming up on Newsbreak. The shortest day of the year. Spacewalking astronauts. And a fake Mona Lisa? But before we get into it, why don't you hit subscribe? Why, why don't you? Why? If you've got things to do today, you better hurry. It's the shortest day of the year here in the Southern Hemisphere, also known as the Winter Solstice. And in the spirit of today, I'm going to keep this intro short. Shortest day of the year, least daylight hours. But I have so many things to do. So why is today so short for us here in the Southern Hemisphere? As you might already know, our Earth is on a tilt, and today's winter solstice marks the moment when our half of the Earth is tilted the farthest away from the sun. Therefore, we get less sunlight, which gives us shorter days. Oh no, I'm running out of time. Today, the other half of the Earth, the Northern Hemisphere, is actually tilted closest to the sun. So it's the longest day of the year for them, AKA the summer solstice, which must be nice for them. We're running out of time! The summer and winter solstices are marked with some long running traditions. In England, thousands of people are allowed into Stonehenge to watch the sun rise over the rocks. While down in Antarctica, Aussie expeditioners go for a sub-zero swim. You see, at this time of the year in Antarctica, the sun only rises above the horizon for about two and a half hours. But after the winter solstice, they slowly start to get a bit more daylight. As for today, though... Oh, no! Oh, well, this is all I've got on tomorrow, too. Hey, Sydney Siders, it's time to start wearing these again. Masks are now mandatory on public transport for everyone in Greater Sydney, while people living here will have to wear them in these situations. It comes after an outbreak in Eastern Sydney has grown to 11 cases, and authorities are a little worried because it's a strain of the virus that can spread really quickly. The International Space Station has just got a solar-powered upgrade. Astronauts Thomas Pesquet and Shane Kimbrough spent their weekend equipping the ISS with some powerful new solar panels. It took them two spacewalks and more than six hours to install and then unfurl the 19-metre panels in the first of a bunch of electrical upgrades for the ISS. Sport, sport, sport. It's been a big weekend in sport. So here's Paul with sport. Spanish superstar John Rahm has won the US Open. It was a neck-and-neck -neck race between him and South African Louis Oosthuizen. But when you can sink putts like this... You probably deserve to win. Ram's win comes after he had to withdraw from his last tournament after testing positive for COVID-19. Ram will take home more than 16 million Aussie dollars for the win, which I'm sure will make him feel a little bit better. Aussie Ben Simmons has been knocked out of the NBA playoffs. He and his Philadelphia 76ers lost to the Atlanta Hawks in a tight game seven today. Atlanta will now take on the Milwaukee Bucks for a spot in the finals. Back here in Australia, Melbourne United are one win away from an NBL title. They beat Perth on Sunday, taking a 2-0 lead in the best of five series. Melbourne's Udai Baba finished with 15 points for the game, including this long bomb. Baba from halfway. Got it! Eight-time Olympic gold medalist Usain Bolt has made a stormy announcement over the weekend. Him and his partner Cassie Bennett have had twins and have decided on the name St. Leo and Thunder. Yep, you heard that right. Thunderbolt. Now that has to be the coolest name ever, right? Next up, we're going to check out some animals and a knockoff famous painting that have gained a bit of a following. Seriously, stop following me. I thought we'd start by checking in with this herd of migrating elephants in China. Where they're going, we still don't know. But now millions of people have been following their journey after it started airing 24-7 on Chinese TV. OK, but seriously, where are they going? I need answers. Speaking of live streams, in the US, bald eagles are the animal of choice, which makes perfect sense. It is their national emblem, after all. Dozens of different streams have been popping up from across the country, where viewers can keep an eye on nests, laying eggs, incubating eggs, hatching eggs, and feeding hatchlings in eggs. So, I mean, if you're into eagles or eggs, sounds like good fun. And finally, this is not the Mona Lisa. It's a fake. 
and it's just sold for a little over four and a half million dollars at auction. Record price for a fake. It's known as the Hecking Mona Lisa, and the guy who used to own it claimed it was the original, and this one in the Louvre was the fake. Not really sure how many people believed him, but experts reckon the Hecking still dates back to the 1600s. I can't tell the difference. Well, that's all the news we've got for you today. In the meantime, don't forget you can hit subscribe, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.